I, I want to start by just giving kind of the big picture of, of the why of, of next gen sector partnerships, because this is really important to be grounded in. I know you all are here today because you're invested in building sector partnerships that work. And I know that it's a diverse group. I know we've got chambers. I know we've got workforce boards. I know we've got educators. But I want to start by really grounding us in the big picture view of what role sector partnerships serve. And it's really recognizing this central goal, regardless of what organization you, you sit at, whether your economic development, education, workforce development, at the end of the day, what we're aiming for is this. It's good jobs for local people, right? And what we know is that this is a this is a big and messy and complex undertaking that we often silo out. So when you think about how public systems are organized, we gen generally have two big categories, sometimes even more, that on the growing good jobs end of things, that's where you see all of the various economic development organizations, chambers of commerce, industry associations that often operate at multiple levels, state, local, their, their domain, if we're generalizing with, you know, painting with a pretty broad brush is it's about making sure businesses are healthy and supported and growing good jobs. Then on the, on the side of preparing people for those good jobs, this is the arena of workforce development and education. And there's a whole bunch of different people and different organizations tasked with doing that work. And consider this list just a starting place. We know this really looks quite different um, in all of your regions, and probably the list is a whole lot longer. And the challenge here is that that big picture goal of growing good jobs and, and connecting people to those good jobs is a little bit of everybody's job. So as Lindsay was telling the history of Colorado, what was so significant and instrumental to your success early on is a recognition that if we continue to operate these systems and programs independent of one another, we're going to miss the boat. And here's why. If you really think about kind of the consequences of this sort of fragmentation, first, it's hard to work together. It's hard to work together when nobody's in charge, nobody's calling the shots, everybody's busy, everybody's got their head down, everybody's got a million programs and initiatives to implement. It's really tough to figure out how to work together across these many, many different systems and organizations. Um, you know, and, and we know this to be true, that it, you know, collaboration is just fundamentally hard. It's especially hard when there's no common point of accountability across all those different organizations and systems I referenced on the last slide. We know that there are differences in missions and funding streams and performance metrics, what everybody's aiming for. It can be really difficult to make sure you're rowing in the same direction if all of those different, different entities are aiming for slightly different things. And we know that grants tend to come along and create that, that temporary shared point of accountability. Um, and you know that often is focused around specific populations, specific initiatives. And as Lindsay said, you know, we all know this, that grants come and go and therefore don't stick as a long-term source of accountability. But here's the thing that is the challenge in Colorado. It's the challenge everywhere across the country is that everybody in all of those systems is being tasked with doubling down on partnerships with industry. Everybody's trying to do it. Let's get out there. Let's figure out how to get business people to step up. Let's get our advisory board stronger. Let's get our, our, our talent pipeline management group stood up so that we have business leading um, you know, our work collectively. And so when Lindsay said earlier, death by a thousand cuts, this is how it happens. You have so many independent entities all doubling down on their own independent employer engagement and outreach. And what it means is that we spread employers really thin. So here's the risk. First, employers get tired. They're tired of being asked from so many different people in organizations to pitch in, to step up, to sit on this board or that board. And at the same time, we know there are a whole bunch of employers, many of the smaller, medium-sized businesses, which we know to be the most important drivers of jobs, that are just left out. You know, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming and it's hard to figure out where and how to fit in. What follows from that is that when employers are burned out, when they're spread thin, it's really hard to bring them together at a critical mass level, which is what we need if we are going to have integrity 
in the decisions we make about what kinds of programs are developed and how we're building pathways into good jobs. So if we don't have that critical mass of employers, we have to ask ourselves, do we have integrity in, in how we go about developing training programs? And the risk then, of course, as it relates to students and job seekers is that they may not get the right education at the right time for jobs that exist and jobs that are growing in their backyard. So the student, right, comes in to any institution and assumes and hopes that there has been that due diligence on the back end, that, that somebody has done that work to ensure that the program they're entering will, in fact, lead to the job and career they hope for. But we've got to ask ourselves, being honest about the challenges of engaging employers, do we have confidence that the programs and the systems that we've built are in fact aligned and targeted to real labor market demand. The other challenge of the fact that so many of these entities and programs are operating independently is that we don't have a good mechanism for coordination at a labor market level. So even though there are multiple organizations doing this work of training for high demand jobs, if they're doing it independently, there's a risk of either undersupplying, there are some really important gaps that just go unfilled. And we know that what that leads to ultimately is that companies will uproot and, and go to where they can find the talent. The reverse is also true, that if you've got a whole bunch of entities, a whole bunch of programs, all looking at the same list of hot jobs and, and doubling down on their own training programs without coordination with one another, there's a risk of overdoing it, training too many, too many people with the same jobs and skills, which both leads to people not being likely to get jobs and inadvertently contributing to wage depression. All of this, all of these are consequences of a lack of coordination and the lack of a shared table where we can really get employers to lean in and step up in a bigger way and at a level of depth and breadth that goes beyond what would be possible if we're doing that independently. So this is the big picture here and, and the ultimate consequence that is so real, you know, it's real, it's real everywhere. And this is an ongoing struggle is that if we can't figure out this equation, we know that it means that businesses cannot find the talent that they need and people cannot access jobs which has very real consequences for the health, the inclusiveness, the resilience of our regional economies. So what I really wanna underscore here is this is why it's so important that we integrate these conversations, that we don't you know, allow our, our public systems to dictate the way that we organize conversations about skills and workforce over here and conversations about economic growth and vitality over here, that our ability to respond effectively to the needs of our regional economy and the needs of our communities requires integration across economic development, workforce, and education. That's what Colorado did so well in the early days, and that's at the heart of what Next Gen Sector Partnership Building is all about.